The Things You Didn't Know series has finally arrived in Tears of the Kingdom, and boy have we found some mind-boggling discoveries already. Before we jump in, just know that we're keeping this as spoiler light as possible. If you still enjoy this series, hit that like button, because we got a wild ride. In the previous game, this bridge in Kakariko Village had a secret apple underneath that the developers hid. Well, in Tears of the Kingdom, it got a new friend, a second apple. If you use a freezing weapon on any body of water, it'll create handy ice blocks. Just like we've shown in a previous tips video, this is a great way to protect your shield for shield surfing and can be used to make vehicles. And of course by itself, it makes a fan and a freezing weapon at the same time. Another bonus with this is that it can be shot with shock arrows to conduct damaging electricity in a wide area of effect. This is funny because apparently ice is a pretty poor conductor of electricity. Shield surfing can also be used on rails, and you can transfer rails by jumping. The best way to kickstart your shield surfing trip though is with a rocket shield first. Many players have found some great ways to make shield surfing more fun, such as using minecarts, regular carts, or the slabs of ice. But carts are fairly rare and ice doesn't last very long. But what if I told you there's an infinitely better option right under your nose? Frozen meat. Freezing a slab of meat will make an insanely low friction shield surf and even different meats have different properties. Nah, this isn't surf and turf. This is surf on turf. <laughs> Just like in Breath of the Wild, the Zora still don't fancy electricity and will often immediately cower or run in fear. Well, if you want to make friends instead, a bit of fresh water is a decent peace offering. When up against a battle talus, you can ascend up the platforms and even through the talus itself. And an easy way to knock off its buddies off of their platforms is to use a muddle bud on the talus. It will aggro on its own friends and send them flying off their perch. When using the Zonai small wheels on a creation, there's a secret input you likely missed. By turning in one direction, then quickly braking and turning in the other direction, easiest done with a half moon motion on the controller, you can actually drift your vehicle in Tears of the Kingdom. You can tell you did this correctly by the sound of tires squealing. Here's a neat way to get bullet time in combat. Hold a rock, then ascend as soon as possible. Great for dodging attacks and easy bullet time. Another secret tip while building or grabbing certain materials is simply using the ZL button to flatten whatever you're holding. The really cool thing about this flatten ability is that it's buffed with specific items, such as sleds, construct heads, and homing cars, as it will auto turn it upright at larger angles compared to other pieces because for the most part, these pieces want to be upright anyways. Diving down a deep hole can be kind of scary, especially since you can't see the bottom. Well, a super easy trick is to drop a bright bloom seed midair while you're diving. Now you can see what your landing area will look like and how far away it is. Ruined rubble that falls from the sky is not only a good elevator, but also a decent attachment to fuse to your weapon. Also, if you tried to reach Zelda's study in Hyrule Castle, you may have been greeted by a nasty surprise. The bridge before it collapses right beneath your feet. Cool thing is, you can fuse these pieces as well, literally taking pieces of Hyrule Castle with you. <laughs> Dazzle fruits are an amazing way to dispatch stall enemies. No more scrambling around during battle. One throw, and it's over. An interesting way to detonate items on a small timer is by setting them on fire. Things like muddle buds, puff shrooms, dazzle fruits, and others can be burned by igniting them, and it will set them off after being burnt up. Gloom is some pretty nasty stuff, quickly chipping away at Link's hearts, but he can actually shield surf safely over it without being harmed. Remember to always bring your best skateboard or surfboard. Did you know that if it's raining after you warp to a shrine and want to use a campfire to change the weather, just use the entrance of the shrine as a makeshift roof to light your fire. Just like in Breath of the Wild, sapphire-fused rods are great for farming and knock a bunch of materials off of trees in one fell swoop. A slightly slower but definitely cooler way is to use auto-build. By having a schematic of a bunch of apples stuck together, you can use the built-in pull mechanism to pull materials directly to you, a personal aerial vacuum. This makes grabbing multiple things from up high a breeze. Did you know that you can parry your own cannonball? 
you may have found that fusing mushrooms to equipment will give them bouncy properties. But there is a secret technique with this. Slap even the most basic mushroom on the weakest shield, and now it has the ability to 100% guarantee a disarm against even the most powerful weapon, knocking them clean out of enemy hands. Shock emitters are slightly different from frost and flame emitters. The emitter itself actually conducts electricity. Dazzle fruits, when used, stun most enemies in the game, but don't affect like likes because, well, they don't have eyes. You can make interesting arrow interactions by having a source of fire nearby. You can now fuse an arrowhead, then light it on fire to have both at the same time. This can make for some fire electric hybrid arrows, long range updrafts with spicy peppers or sunshrooms, and even a budget fire kisai arrow. Did you know that a Gleox Tail Whip can be flurry rushed? <laughs> Tired of breaking weapons? Well, our good friend the Rock Octorok can now completely fix up any weapon that's busted up, and even throw a bonus random modifier on top of it. What a good friend. You can also hit an enemy with a thrown weapon without breaking it by simply recalling it back to you. Nintendo has already hit the game with a patch that has fixed a bunch of glitches a mere two weeks after release. Things that are not possible anymore include multiple duplication glitches, a glitch called Zuggling to hold multiple weapons at the same time, overloading with that to lose body parts and typos, and clip through the ground to see underneath Hyrule, stealing the Master Sword out of the first intro sequence and playing the game with it, putting modifiers on weapons that are normally impossible, and using auto build cancel slide to fly across the map at insanely high speeds. It looks like Nintendo is not quite as relaxed as they were in the days of Breath of the Wild, and will likely see constant updates to fix these glitches. Courser Bee Honey, when fused, lets you summon an angry swarm of bees that attack the closest thing to them, but this can be multiplied when shot with multi-shot arrows. A cool detail with bees, just like in real life, is that smoke is a great deterrent for bees, which will disperse when touching smoke. Link now has a new special passive when charging up a spin attack with swords only. Unlike in Breath of the Wild, he now actually has increased resistance to stagger, also known as super armor. Be careful though because very powerful attacks will still knock you off your feet. Also with shield fused two-handed weapons, by rolling your fingers from Y to B to A, you can cancel your spin attack and parry directly out of it, making shield fused spin to wins extremely safe. Also, as an upgrade from Breath of the Wild, if you ever accidentally fall into water with zero stamina, you'll now get emergency last-ditch stamina to try to get to solid ground. Some players may have had some difficulty building their creations, because depending on the shape of the creation, keeping things upright can be kind of tough. Well, the perfect tool is the Zonai Stake, which can be pushed into the ground to make a garage jack to hold your contraptions up in the air for you. Oil and pine cones are a new type of material that can create a powerful fire and updraft. So you might be thinking, great, I'll just set it on fire. Well, hold on, there's a special rule. These materials have a specific order. They need the fire first, then the oil fuel added second to set them off correctly. Hot air balloons don't necessarily need flame emitters. Any source of fire works fine. And the previously shown fueled fires give bonus speed to hot air balloons, making them rise faster than normal. On top of that, these fueled fires have a secret ability. Normal fires are easily put out by rain, but these powerful fires cannot be doused by rainy weather. Most NPCs when attacked simply put their arm up or look in shock if you attack them, but some others react differently, such as holding up a newspaper or protecting himself with a helmet. Flux Constructs are fearsome enemies you can meet early in the game, but they are especially weak to two abilities, Fuse and Ultra Hand. You can either steal six blocks directly off their body with either ability, which then makes them collapse and fall to the ground, or with Ultra Hand, go directly for the main block and shake it off. Quickly attaching random parts together with Ultra Hand will also cause it to fall apart. And as a subtle nod to Breath of the Wild with Guardians, you can stand directly on top of their head, and they'll be completely confused. Flux Constructs also can't attack Link without their corresponding parts in its humanoid form. If you take their hands, they can't slam you. If you take their feet, they can't stomp you. Now go for a friendly dance-off, or play some rock, paper, scissors. I guess this is a tie?
there you go, 42 amazing things you can do in Tears of the Kingdom, and you know this is only the beginning of a long journey through discovering Tears of the Kingdom's many secrets. Let us know your favorite fact you learned. And of course, for more Tears of the Kingdom content, stay right here on GameSpot. <laughs>